Hello, my name is Ryan from Gold Leaf Scientific, and today we are going to be talking about winterization and de-waxing. First, let's begin with the definition pulled straight from Wikipedia. Winterization of oil is a process of removing the higher melting point parts from oil, like waxes or triglycerides, by slowly cooling vegetable oils and felling saturated glycerides from the solvent, used primarily for oils and salad dressings mainly applied in bio-industry. The most common oil that is winterized is rice bran oil, which has a high content of waxes, fatty acids, and lipids. Notice that it doesn't specify which solvent will be used. It could be assumed that the initial solvent used to perform the extraction could also be used to precipitate out the waxes and higher melting point compounds. Typically, the people that extract with hydrocarbons and supercool those hydrocarbons to precipitate out the waxes would call that technique, technique de-waxing, while those that use a different solvent altogether, like ethanol, to achieve their de-waxing procedure would typically call it a winterization, but the two are of the same thing. And in fact, if you wanted to call it the correct term, it would probably be called freeze precipitation but the confusion is somewhat warranted. The procedure may incorporate several different techniques. Put simply, de-waxing or winterization is simply the process of removing waxes. But by removing something, you're also purifying something. And by removing the waxes, you improve the viscosity, stability, or the shelf life. So let's quickly summarize how the process is done. First, we start by using a solvent to completely dissolve the sample. Typically, we would use ethanol, and for the best results, that's, that would be my suggestion. It is crucially important that you completely dissolve the solvent. There are a couple ways to speed up this process. One would be to use heat. A hotter solvent is gonna be a more aggressive solvent, the, the, the next would be to use agitation. So a hot plate stir would be ideal. Make sure you give enough time, heat, and agitation to completely dissolve the sample. But if you want a visual indicator, a quick test is to use a laser pointer to shine through the solution. If a beam of light is found in the solution, then keep heating and stirring. It's not completely dissolved. If, however, you shine the light through the solution and you don't see the beam in the solution at all, then the solution is completely dissolved and you can go ahead and move on to the next step. Now it's time to allow it to cool and settle. This is pretty easy. Just put it into a freezer and allow it to sit for an extended period of time at a low temperature. The colder you have it, the faster it works, but too cold is possible. So I would recommend to not allow it to cool below 50 Celsius. I'm sorry, negative 50 Celsius. Usually this would take 24 to 48 hours for complete precipitation. After that, it's ready to move on to the filtering stage. Here you would use a filtration setup, which typically consists of the consists of a Buchner funnel and filtration flask, along with some filtration paper. I would recommend quantitative uh, filter paper, and the pore size would generally be uh, around 20 for fa fast filtration, and no smaller than five micron. It's best to keep the whole process uh, as fast as possible or as cold as possible that way you don't allow things to heat up and allow stuff to go back into solution and fall through the filter paper so how does this all work basically uh, hotter solvents are more aggressive and dissolve more and colder solvents are less aggressive so think of the solvent like a hand. When the solvent's hot, it grabs a big handful, as much as it could 
possibly hold on to. But as the solvent cools down, its grip loosens, and now it's no longer able to hold as much. Now stuff falls out of the hands. This analogy is exactly how it works. Your solvent at a warmer temperature completely dissolves your sample, and then by cooling your solvent, the solubility is decreased and the sample is precipitated out, or in this case, the waxes are precipitated out. In general, the heavier compounds tend to precipitate first, and lighter compounds uh, tend to precipitate last. So in the chart over here to the right, what you'll notice is that ethanol at roughly room temperature will be able to dissolve all the compounds below it. So waxes, cannabinoids, flavonoids, terpenes, it could dissolve everything at room temperature. However, if you notice, as the temperature starts to decrease, the ethanol is no longer able to hold on as much. And one of the first compounds that it tends to precipitate is the waxes. But as stated earlier, too cold can be detrimental. So if you'll notice, if you continue to go down, like for instance, below negative 50, some of your other compounds will tend to precipitate too, such as cannabinoids, possibly your flavonoids, or even your terpenes. At a certain point, once you get so cold, your ethanol will turn into a solid. Although cooling the solvent allows us to precipitate out most of the waxes, we also employ a separation based on polarity to help us precipitate out the waxes even more thoroughly. So what is polarity? The common phrase in chemistry is like dissolves like. So polar solvents want to dissolve polar compounds. And likewise, nonpolar solvents want to dissolve nonpolar compounds. So by using a more polar solvent, we could precipitate, precipitate out more of the nonpolar compounds. Polar molecules are asymmetrical in shape and have a net charge. This tends to force them to group together with other polar compounds and therefore exclude out the nonpolar compounds. It's important to keep in mind that polarity is not a discrete measure. It isn't absolute. Things are not just simply polar or nonpolar. There's a lot of gray area. For example, a compound might be smack dab right in the middle between nonpolar and polar, and it might be difficult to classify it. Another interesting example is emulsions and soaps. These compounds tend to have a polar end and a nonpolar end, and because of this, they could essentially dissolve both polar and nonpolar compounds. This is why soap tends to work so good because the water is polar, but the oils and greases on your hands are nonpolar. The soap unifies these two compounds and helps wash them away. Another separation technique is to swing the polarity. If there's a range of solvents that could be used to dissolve your sample, you first start with the most polar or nonpolar solvent. Then you do your extraction, your solvent recovery, etc. Then you re-dissolve your sample in the opposite end. So if you started with a nonpolar solution that you extracted with, you would recover all your solvent and everything, then use a polar solvent to re-dissolve your sample in it. By using two opposite ends of the polarity spectrum, you shake off the compounds on the most extreme ends. So for instance, if you're to use heptane for your initial extraction, you would likely pick up everything, dissolve everything, cannabinoid acids, flavonoids, cannabinoids, carotenes, and waxes. Then when you swing over to your ethanol, your more polar solution, you're gonna drop out your waxes. But since you originally used heptane in the beginning, you won't have any chlorophylls. The same process could be done in reverse. So if you started with ethanol, your more polar solution, you're more likely to have more polar compounds like chlorophyll. 
but when you swing them over to a more nonpolar solvent, you're likely to lose the chlorophylls. Polarity should probably also not be underestimated. Small differences in polarity can have a drastic effect. Feel free to explore or discuss the dis topics below. You can also comment on this video or send emails anytime. And I'll try my best to respond to them as quickly as possible. So as stated earlier, temperature swings uh, will cause precipitation. So you could always magnify that effect by swinging it even greater. So if you start with a hot solvent and then cool it down very cold, you could use a lot less solvent. A hot solvent can be anywhere from 10 to 1,000 times greater effect. Same thing for polarity swings. You could also uh, have a much greater polarity swing and there ha therefore have a more defined separation. Uh, settling is also important. Allowing more time and reducing the agitation is, is crucial. By reducing the amount of agitation, you not only uh, allow faster coagulation, but the coagulation also tends to uh, be bigger um, and more clumped together. And this tends to reduce the filtration time needed. Another idea that we didn't touch on at all is pH. If you alter the pH, you will also alter the solubility which is the same effect we use to uh, precipitate out other compounds by altering solubility, that is. So we've used temperature and polarity to alter solubility, but we didn't use the pH at all. So it stands that we could have a third whole nother tool in our arsenal to use to uh, precipitate out other compounds even more thoroughly. Another thing to consider is time. If you allow enough time and allow enough um, or a lack of agitation, uh, precipitation will occur even at room temperature. So you don't have to actually cool it, but it definitely speeds things up. It'll probably take at least a week for stuff to precipitate out in any kind of uh, substantial amount. And to completely precipitate might take a month or more. But it's definitely worth pursuing because significant expenses allocated to the chillers or freezers needed for the winterization process to occur um, at a very low temperature. So if you could do that at elevated temperature, you could save yourself a lot of money and a lot of headache. Okay, that's all I got for now. Make sure you check out more of our videos and tutorials. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Post any question, questions and comments below. And I will see you guys next time.